Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hi everyone, see you again. And this time we are going to discuss on the particular issue about respecting environment. My dear sisters and brothers, you know in one particular surah, the surah entitled Al-Ghasiyah, uh, verse number 17 to 20. If you have the Quran, you can open the Quran and let us recite the ayah together with me. Allah says, A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim Afala yanzuruna ilal ibili kaifa khuliqat Wa ilal samai kaifa rufi'at Wa ilal jibali kaifa nusibat Wa ilal arudi kaifa sutihat Okay, what does it mean? Allah says then Do they not look at the camels How they are created And at the sky, how it is raised And at the mountains, how they are erected and at the earth how it is spread out my dear sisters and brothers if you look again at the meaning of this ayat it shows how we are being recommended by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to observe around us to check things around us and to ponder upon whatever is around us so it is called environment our brothers and sisters in Islam, why should we respect these things around us? Why should we feel important to the environment? Environment is the amanah to all of us. This environment is for us to take care of. This environment for us to nurture. And this environment for us as a Muslim to protect. Right, how can we respect the environment? And uh, before that, what is the important, what is the benefit of the environment to us? My dear sisters and brothers in Islam, this environment in Islam has been called as subservient to the job as caliph. So we understand you and me, we are the caliph of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need this environment to uphold or to complete and accomplish the mission as caliph. Can you imagine our life without oxygen? Can you imagine our life without food? Can you imagine our life without sun and moon? Can you imagine our life without day and night? We need this all to survive. And to be sincere, the world without us, they can continue their life. But we cannot continue our life without environment. So this is how much we depend on the environment to survive. Now, next question is, how can we respect environment? My dear sisters and brothers, in Islam, there are several ways for us to respect the environment. And I would like to share with you just three points. In fact, we have a lot more, but because of the limited time given, so I would like to discuss with you on the three main important points. So what can we do? The first one is avoid wasting. It can be a spiritual sense of meaning of wasting, like time, yeah, like emotion, feeling, yeah. So don't waste your feeling. Don't waste your feeling, meaning that do not waste on anger. Do not waste your feeling to something which is not giving a lot of benefit. Anger, hatred, envy, jealous, and many more, yeah. So it also can be meant uh, to something which is physical. You waste your food, yeah? you waste your time. You can observe your time, right? Okay, and you waste your uh, good things. Yeah? You waste your talk okay? and many more. Now, one hadith talk about uh, how Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked us to observe the usage of water even in the time of taking ablution yeah so this hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam appeared while saad was taking the ablution who is saad saad is the companion 
And when Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam saw Saad was using a lot of water, he intervened by saying, "What is this, Saad? What is this? You are wasting water." So what is the replied by Saad? Saad replied by asking, "Can there be wastefulness while taking the ablution?" And to which our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Yes, even if you take them on the bank of a rushing river." So hadis riwayat Ibn Majah. So it shows, even you are at the bank of the river, you are by the riverside, you are taking wudu. It also can cause wastage. So be careful. Be careful whenever you are taking ablution. This is just an example, my dear brothers and sisters. Keep think of how much you benefit from the water for your wudu, and how much did you waste from the water for not taking wudu. So make sure whenever you open the tap, so you open not very huge or um, allow a huge amount of water to come out from the tap, but it is just enough. For you to take the water for yourself, okay. Remember the amount that you waste. You didn't take it for your ablution, and it also can be extended to all forms of things. For example, expending uh, or spending your money, okay, and spending your time. It also about the pollution, okay, pollution of nature. Spoiling the ecological balance, all right, and also whether you are giving harm to other living beings, all right. So that is the first one about wasting, about uh, avoid wastefulness. Now the second one is how is your relationship with the animals? Okay, well treat animals. There are cat, for example, yeah, cats, and you have rabbits and a lot more. Okay, dogs. Yeah. So, how would you well treat these animals? Our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam prohibited the ill treatment of animals, and even warned us concerning this well treat animal. A woman was sent to the hell because she tied up her cat and neither gave it food and nor allowed it free. So, this woman, even though he, she Fasting, um, recommended fast, and even perform the sunnah prayer, but she did not observe the relationship or not treat well the animals, so she actually harm the animal and not do the very best to respect the environment, including the animal. So where is the place? The place is in the hell fire. Wal iyazubillah. Now the third part: How could we respect the environment? You know our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and even the rightful caliphs, okay, the four uh, companions, the four uh, sahaba, so they really take care of the trees and the woodland. Taking for example, uh, narrated by Yahya from Malik, so he said Abu Bakar as Siddiq was sending armies to Sham, that is Syria. He went for a walk and. As uh, Yazid said to Abu Bakar, "Will you ride or shall I get down?" And Abu Bakar said, "I will not ride, and you will not get down. I intend these steps of mine to be in the way of Allah." So Abu Bakar advised Yazid with this few things: "You will find the people who claim to have totally given themselves to Allah, leave them to what they claim to have given themselves. I advise you ten things." The first one: Do not kill women or children in the war. Do not cut down fruit-bearing trees. Do not destroy an inhabited place. Do not slaughter sheep or camels except for food. Do not burn bees. Do not scatter them. Do not steal from the booty. And do not be cowardly. Do not strike what they have shaved with the sword. So, my dear sisters and brothers, it shows how even during war, we have to take care of the environment. Can you imagine what more if we are not having war? So, isn't it part of our duty and rule 
to respect the environment so my dear sisters and brothers respect the environment for respect the environment we are doing our amana and duty as caliph in this world so that's all for now wabillahi taufiq wal hidayah wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh